Hi, everyone. All right, let's work on this practice test. Now, for one and two, we find the period and amplitude of the grass below. And when I look, if I just start at the y-axis, we get one period when we go from zero to pi, and that's a, just a good way to figure out. From zero to pi, you have one cycle of the graph, and that's repeatable every pi units over. So, and I do want to make a point, the way this thing's plotted, if you look, that's one, two, three, four, pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, pi, and then one, two, three, four to two pi. So that two pi's on the end there. That might be a little deceptive. And I think it's the same deal right here, that that two pi is right there. All right. Now the amplitude is just kind of how much is the graph stretched out and if I look at the middle, we go 2 is the maximum height, negative 2 is the minimum height, 0 is in the middle, and the amplitude measures from the middle, so the amplitude is 2 units. All right, on this next one, the period. Now, actually in the middle, it looks like it's at negative 1 is the middle of the graph, the midline there. If I start at that midline and I go one cycle, this looks like the sign here, it looks like 0 to 2 pi is a period. And the amplitude, now I'm measuring from negative 1, and I'm going 2 units up and 2 units down, some positive 1 to negative 3, the amplitude is 2 again. Okay, now... We get a little more involved here. Um, we've got to figure out what the graph of this curve is. We figure out what the equation is. So, um, first of all, the amplitude goes right here. It looks like we go up. This is all right. Going by halves, it looks like. So this is one half. I go 0.5, and then for the sign, I'm going to pause this. All right, so we got the amplitude out here. Now, what I want to do is just kind of draw what the sine curve is. And you can look, we have a phase shift from the original, well, from the parent function. Looks like we are shifting pi units to the left. So I'm going to put a phase shift of negative pi. Okay. Now, there's a couple ways of doing it, now, factoring out that 0.5 and everything, but I wonder if we go to our good friend in the video, the Math by Fives guy, and just use the negative C over B as another way you can use the phase shift. And that is equal to negative pi. Well, this is A. The B is 0.5. So negative C over 0.5 is equal to negative pi. Just multiply both sides by 0.5. I got negative C equals negative 0.5 pi. So C is 0.5 times pi. And that will give me the phase shift we need to get this. So there's that. All right. Now, number four is the same kind. We're going to use the sine function. Um, if 
5 to negative 1. It looks like negative 3 is right in the middle there, the midline of the curve. And it looks like our amplitude, and it's a sign, and we're on the y-axis, so this looks good to me. The amplitude looks like 2. Um, sine of pi x. So, doesn't look like, well, the phase shift is negative, well, the period, the period is 2 pi over b. And So the period's 2 pi over b. Now b is actually pi, so that's 2 pi over pi, which is 2. And I think we can see that 1 from 0 to 2, we have one complete period of the graph. Um, but we have a vertical shift. And it just looks like we've shifted it three units down. So I'm going to put a three right there, minus three. All right, so now it's time to graph. And we got to get it two full periods here. I'm going to mark the scales. So this is a pi function. And I'm just going to draw my axes there. And I think I'm going to use pencil just to draw the initial just sine curve. Not that pencil. I'm just kind of draw it lightly here. There's one period. And I'll come on this side and draw another period of sine. And let's do a little figuring here. The um, amplitude is 2. The period is 2 pi over b. In this case, b is pi over 4. So 2 pi over pi over 4. And if I do 2 pi over 1 times 4 over pi, just switch those two around. The pi's will cancel, and 2 times 4 is 8. So the period is 8 units. So I'm going to make that in pen. That's 8. That's 4. That's half of that. Half of that is 2. Half between is 6. So I'll mark by 2's here. Negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. All right. So I've got the period, i um, got the amplitude is 2, down here is negative 2, and then we have the phase shift. I'm going to use negative C over B again, but I'm also going to show the way Mr. Shell showed it also right now I'll just use the negative c over b and that's a double negative pi which is pi and b is pi over 4 so that's pi times 4 over pi which is 4 so we got to shift this thing 4 units to the right so let me take this point here and I'm going to shift it four units, which brings it to here. Let me take this important point and shift it four units to four. Let me take this one, shift it four units. That's there. And if I shift this one four units to four, so I'm at ten here, right? Okay. Let me go ahead and draw what I got there.
Let's see. I lost myself here for a second. That one's there. This one's there. This one is here. Okay. This one is here. I'm hitting there. There. Oops. That's here, actually, not there. And this one is here. So I'll start here. And I will go up. Okay, I'm going to kind of back up. Let's start over again. Now, I went ahead and just marked these key points. And I just want to shift them, all these points, four units to the right and draw the graph. Um, and then I, I just got myself a little bit confused. So I'm going to use green when I shift these four units to the right. So four units right, that's going to move this one here. This one is going to move here. This point will move here to the origin. This point is down here. And the origin now is here. This point, my move at four is here. This point, my move it four, it's here. This point, move it four, is here. And this point, I'll move it four. But that 12 will be here. So let me try to do that with the green. Okay, so that is in the green now. And that is my final answer for that one. I'm just going to highlight my final answer here. Oops, I'll go back up to there. All right, so there's two periods. All right. This one is a cosine. Change it. the axis. cosine, but it's negative, so I'm going to flip it. I'm going to flip the cosine and um, so I'm going to start down here and go like this. And I got one period there and then I'll come on the other side of the axis and have another period there. And Amplitude is 3, so this is 3 units here, but I'll go negative 3 since it's there, and positive 3 there. And then, I'm just going to mark these, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, the period is 2 pi over b. b here is 1 half, so it's 2 pi over 1 half. And that's 2 pi times 2 over 1, which is 4 pi. So to right here is 4 pi. Half of that is 2 pi. Half of that is pi. Between 2 pi and 4 pi is 3 pi. So that's how we're labeling. That's negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, negative 4 pi. 
All right. And we have no phase shift because C is zero. D, you use D, right? Okay. D is one, so we have a vertical shift. So we just move it one. So I want to take each one of these points and move it up one unit. This point, I'll move up one unit. Here's a unit. A unit there. This goes up to one. This goes up to negative two. This goes up to one. This goes up to three. Wait, it was at three. It goes up to four. This one goes up to one. And this negative three goes up to negative two. All right. So as I do that, and I'll just highlight my final answer here. All right, y equals tangent of x plus 1. So it looks like there's not going to be a phase shift or period, but the period of tangent is pi. And when you need the period, it's pi over b, and b is 1 here, so period is just going to be pi. So I'm going to draw kind of the parent function here first and tangent is full of vertical asymptotes here and the period is pi but for the initial one we got to split that pi in two. So I have pi over two here. This is zero and negative pi over two here. And then one pi over two plus pi, which is two pi over two, is three pi over two. This is five pi over two. This is negative three pi over two. We need at least two periods and we've got, we've got that easily. Um, I really don't like how this is kind of spaced. This should be a little further out. I should have made those a little further out because these are all the same size. But I got a, this kind of. That's zero here. This is pi. And this is two pi. Which really should be labeled also. And this is negative pi here. These are all the same size. This doesn't look like it. This looks a little more spread out than these, but they should be the same. I just kind of misdrew that. But I'm not done because we do have a vertical shift of 1. And I go 1 here, negative 1 here. I need to move. I'm going to kind of draw an invisible line here and just kind of redraw the um, these that go through these points. See, that threw me off because that's a little too spread out compared to these. And then I'm just going to redraw it so that it's going like this. That's terrible. Okay. Should be right here. And this one, start down here, come up here, and then go up. 
and do the same thing there. Let me highlight the final answer. That all needs ignored there. Okay. Now, cotangent. Let me work on period again. Pi over b. b is one third, so it's pi over one third. And if I just multiply top and bottom by 3 or something, I'm going to get 3 pi. That's the period we're going to have for cotangent. Um, there's no vertical shift or phase shift here. What we do have is an amplitude to kind of stretch it out. Um, I'm going to draw... Now this I do, I'm doing the right thing now with cotangent because the initial cotangent, go halfway there, is like that. And it's not like that. It's like this. Okay, this is wrong. But I will get the highlighter. It goes the opposite direction of tangent, so my fault. So these are all going like this. Okay, said so two periods. I just do one, two, three, four periods there. All right. I am going to highlight this. I should have labeled this sometime, huh? Now, where that point of inflection in the curve, you know, right here, kind of changes its direction. That should be 3 right there. And down here, same amount, that should be negative 3 there. And when I label, one period is 3 pi. So this is 3 pi. This would be 6 pi. This would be 9 pi. And this would be negative 3 pi here. Um, I will go halfway. So that's one and one half pi, so I'm going to go negative three pi over two here. This is three pi over two. You know this needs to not be there. Nine, this is nine pi over two. That's four and a half pi. And then six, nine, fifteen, that's um, just fifteen pi over two when I label the half, actually the x-intercepts. It should be right there, going through that. All right, the next one, 2 secant x. Now you know that sec secant of x is equal to 1 over cosine x. So it's a reciprocal of cosine x. So what I'm going to do is graph y equals 2 cosine x as my kind of my base. And there's one period of it. I'll go period on this side of it. And this is 2 here, and this is negative 2 here. And the reciprocal, when it's 0, those are asymptotes that we have to draw in here. I'm going to draw an asymptote here, an asymptote here, and one right here. Um, now, we've got to figure out what the period is. Uh, cosine, the period is 2 pi over 1. Uh, which is just 2 pi. So this right here is 2 pi. Halfway is pi. 
oops, right there, pi. Half of that is pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 2. This is negative pi over 2. Negative pi, just the opposite of what I got here. Negative 3 pi over 2. And this is negative 2 pi. Now, this is not the graph. I, if I'd have been thinking, I would have used pencil there. The graph is where we, remember, we kiss and go up. We come up here, kiss that curve and come down. Start up here, kiss the curve and go up. Kiss and go down, and from this one we will kiss. All right, I'm going to draw. The graph is not this part. That just helps me draw these separate disconnected curves. And they follow all the way down, so that you could have arrows there, because that's what's actually happening. This has an arrow there. So that yellow part is that. Um, let me see here. I'm going to, I'm kind of invading the space there. Now y equals cosecant 2x, and we're going to graph sine x. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and just graph sine x first. And sine starts at the origin comes down, and then I'll do another period of sine over here. And I was going to use pencil, and I forgot again. But um, the period of this one is 2 pi over b, which is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. So this is pi here. Half of pi is pi over 2. Half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. These two make 3 pi over 4. Um, so we're going by pi over 4s. We figure that out on the positive side and then just rewrite it here on the negative side. Negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 4, negative 2 pi. And we have these vertical asymptotes because the reciprocal of sine is cosecant and that's the axis and it's also an asymptote the y-axis is and we come down kiss and go up come up kiss and go down, come down, kiss and go up. Okay, I do remember, there's something I forgot to label here. This is at negative one and these all, all that action is happening at positive one. So, this is the cosecant part. This is just our guides for drawing the cosecant. All right, that's two periods. One period is an up curve and a down curve. That's one period. There's another period. That's two periods. Um, Mr. Shell wanted to make sure that you guys know, study your notes on graphing. I wrote arc cosine, but it's the same thing as inverse cosine. And this is the same as arc sine. Make sure you know the graph and the domains and ranges of those. Make sure you know how to graph those. Just study that. I, I won't have that on the video, but I would like for you to make sure you do know what you're doing there. All right. Now, the arc cosine of one half. We need the exact value. So we're doing inverse functions here now. Um, So, what is the angle that has a cosine of one-half? Now, let's do remember one thing. 
for cosine, we're only dealing with this part of the unit circle for the domain and ring. Well, yeah. So, one half, when I think of one half for cosine for the x coordinate, I'm thinking of this one here. I think if you look at your unit circle that you're talking pi over 3 here. And that's what's in here. So the answer here is pi over 3. And in fact, I was kind of filling this out a little bit. I might start a new one there. But, you know, you got your sign here. It's further out. This is the square root of 3 over 2, or cosine, I mean, the x coordinate. And this is 1 half and this is the square root of 2 over 2. So the cosine, this is the pi over 6, 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6 is the pi over 3. So I'll just kind of fill this out as I need as it comes in handy. But that was the, that's the answer to the inverse cosine is an angle. Inverse cotangent is going to be an angle. Now remember Cotangent is um, cosine over sine. Cosine over sine. And something I remember is the part of the unit circle we look at is, goes with the numerator with the cotangent. So we're still going to be looking at that part, that top part. And, you know, square root of 3 over 2 it's there and one half square root of three over two and one half. So where the cosine is square root of three over two and the sine is one half. Um, if you simplify that, that's the square root of three. So there's my x and there's my y for cotangent. So when I look at this, the square root of three over two and one half here, the cotangent would be square root of 3 cotangent of pi over 6. So the inverse cotangent of square root of 3 is the angle pi over 6. Now we're going to look for this angle, the inverse cotangent of the tangent of 5 pi over 3. All right, well let's find where 5 pi over 3 is. This is 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, Oh, I put those in degrees. I didn't mean to do that. 3 pi over 6, that's pi over 2. 4 pi over 6, that's 2 pi over 3. This is 5 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6 is pi. 7 pi over 6. 8 pi over 6 is 4 pi over 3. 9 pi over 6 is 3 pi over 2. 10 pi over 6 is 5 pi over 3. And that's, that's what we want there. That is, yes, we want the tangent of that. Now, I can see here that the sine, or the cosine here, is 1 half, and the sine is negative square root of 3 over 2. So the tangent of 5 pi over 3 Tangent of 5 pi over 3 is equal to the sine over the cosine. Negative square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. Those 2's will cancel when they're both in the denominators like that. So that's equal to the negative square root of 3. So the tangent, we want the inverse cotangent of negative square root of 3. Okay, let's do recall. Cotangent goes with cosine as far as the part of the circle that we want to deal with. So we're dealing with up here. Um, and we want cosine over sine. So that's positive square root of 3. Now, if I look at this one, I got negative square root of 3. 3 over 2 over positive 1 half. And if I figure out 
cosine over sine on this one, it'll be negative square root of 3 over 2. And the angle that gives us that is 5 pi over 6. Okay, so for cosine, I deal with this part of the unit circle. For cotangent, I also deal with that part of the unit circle. And for one more, the inverse of cosine is secant. I deal with that part. The other three is the right side. The top side for the three I just talked about, the other three is the right side. Just when you're thinking about that. Now, secant, we're going to be dealing with the top again. I should have given you one that was different, but I didn't. All right, of the arc tan of 8 fifteenths. All right, so you've got 8 fifteenths. You've got some angle theta here. And we're going to find the secant of theta. Um, let me just draw a triangle here. Tangent is opposite, and I'll use the 8 over adjacent, which is 15. Okay, now this is a little tough, but we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to get the hypotenuse here. So 8 squared plus 15 squared, just to make that triangle there. And that's 64 plus 225 is c squared, which is 289 equals c squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides here. Square root of 289 is 17. So this is 17. The secant of theta, okay, is the reciprocal of cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So hypotenuse over adjacent which is 17 over 15. All right, I'm going to stop that video.